Hi everyone, I'm Steve Kuban. Happy Biblical New Year. Today is the final day of the year on the Hebrew Biblical calendar, Adar 29. In just a few minutes from now, as the sun goes down here in our backyard in Orlando, Florida, in just a few minutes from now, the first month of the next one year cycle begins, which is the month of Nisan. So, Happy New Year everyone! Nisan is the month of redemption. It is a very blessed month because it's all about Yeshua. He's the one who died on the cross for us. He's our Passover lamb. He's the one who delivered us out of bondage and slavery and brought us into our promised land. So today I'm just celebrating and enjoying him. And in a few minutes I'm going to be shouting Happy Biblical New Year and I hope you'll join me. I'm also celebrating because two years ago, during my Biblical New Year's message, I was on the patio of our apartment in Orlando asking for your prayers because the Lord had put it into my heart to purchase a townhome in which we could do more recording and live streaming. I was praying that God would provide a place for us to be able to do some TV work and recording studio work with proper facilities and especially important in a beautiful outdoor setting that would serve to inspire us. I believed God would provide such a facility for it's important to have the right place. In Exodus, God said, I want to be with you, Moses, and I want to dwell with my people, Israel. And he gave Moses and Israel precise directions how to build a tabernacle for him. And so, too, I believe God gives us precise directions in our lives so that he can tabernacle himself with us and so that we can be with him. We are his living temples. So on this day, exactly two years ago, on the Biblical New Year in 2021, I asked viewers to pray with me that God would provide a town home for us so that we could do more effective work taking worship to the nations. And as you know, in 2020, COVID unfortunately hindered many people from doing traveling and all types of work and even from ministering in churches. Physically, they couldn't go anywhere. But you know what? God knows how to turn our disappointments into His purposes fulfilled for the sake of the Kingdom of God. And like you and many others, we discovered that through the internet, we can actually touch even more people worldwide. God has taken me, a one-time atheist who used to write songs against Him, and is now using me to bring his praises to the nations of the world. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And to declare salvation in his name through worship and music. What an exciting calling this is. Hallelujah. Now, in 2020, God expanded a new chapter in my life to really focus and publish online the songs and the albums he's given me so that millions more can hear and experience his presence. He's also called me to record more songs and albums and to minister teaching through the internet to millions of people around the world. And he has begun to fulfill these goals. You know, I just uploaded some albums onto YouTube. For example, five months ago, The Lord is My Tower. And do you know what? Over a million people have heard it so far. You know, back in the days where I was traveling in the Philippines, it took a lot of work to sell 10,000 cassettes and CDs, let alone 20,000, let alone 40,000. But here, by just placing it on the internet, a million views so far, just from that one YouTube video, that is amazing. And the people's comments are amazing. They're saying, thank you, Steve. Thank you, Pastor Steve. Thank you for sharing these powerful songs of worship. I feel the presence of the Lord. And some of these people are in very difficult countries, even countries where you're not supposed to be a Christian. It's even against the laws, so to speak. God is ministering salvation and his presence through worship in spirit and truth to people all over the world via the internet. I celebrated 40,000 CDs and cassettes in the Philippines, and you know what? They even gave me a gold record award and a platinum record award, but that's even small compared to what God has been able to do just with this one video in five months called The Lord is My Tower. Glory to His name. I also uploaded Come Holy Spirit album 
and more of the river make sure please that you listen to these on the internet they are very powerful just put in youtube steve kuban and you'll see all these amazing albums praise god thousands and thousands have heard these albums as well as many many other songs and they've been brought closer to god through them now many of the songs god has given me have come spontaneously by the holy spirit for example in 2016 while i was in dubai the lord gave me an entire album spontaneously called yahweh i love you which is all about yahweh and yeshua yeshua's name means yahweh's salvation or yahweh saves i believe it's important that we refer to god and to jesus by their proper hebrew names yahweh and yeshua so that the meaning of the names gets into our heart. It is reinforced in our understanding. My most recent album is called Guard Over America, 22 songs of prayer and intercession for America. And it's available online in over a hundred different stores like iTunes, Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon, Pandora, etc. Praise the Lord. I believe God is going to open up more doors and we're going to record more albums and more songs. And his music is going to touch many people in nations all around the world. Praise the Lord. So a year, no, two years ago, I was praying. It was this time, Nisan, beginning of the biblical new year, and was mentioning that God had put in my heart. It literally, he woke me up on a Sunday morning, the first day of the, of the week, and he took me to an application on my phone, and I saw this property. And the Lord told me, this is the place for you. And I went, I wasn't able to see it, but I went into a neighbor's home and there it was it was beautiful it had a 18 foot loft ceiling sloping it had all the space that i would need to do recording and i was so amazed and the holy spirit tugged on my heart and when i looked and saw the backyard this is the backyard of the town home it's a forest beautiful forest directed it's situated on a little lake and here it's called lake sherwood in it's Orlando, Florida. And that when you walk through it, it's just like you're going back in time to Robin Hood and the Sherwood Forest. It's so beautiful. I just really felt in my heart, this is the property that God wants for us. So two years ago on this YouTube video and Facebook, I asked you to pray, pray in agreement. And shortly thereafter, God provided. He is Jehovah Jireh, Yahweh, the Lord, my provider. Hallowed be thy name, Jehovah God, you reign, and you will never change, O oh Lord, forever you're the same. Jehovah Jireh, you supply my every need, Jehovah Rapha. Perfect health you give to me, hallowed be thy name, Jehovah God you reign, and you will never change, O oh Lord, forever you're the same. Praise his name, Jehovah my provider, Jehovah Rapha, my healer, Jehovah Shalom, my peace, Jehovah Roi, my shepherd, Jehovah Makedesh, the Lord who sanctifies me and cleanses me, Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord, my righteousness, Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, my victory, Jehovah Shammah, the Lord who is present there for me. Let's give glory to his name. Hallelujah. Well, make sure you check on my YouTube channel or on my Facebook channel. All of these albums, you'll be amazed and they'll bring you into the presence of God where he will change you by his holy presence. Amen. Let me talk about, just for a moment, the month of Nisan. Nisan is the first month. All the months of the year are counted beginning from now. The month Tishri is the seventh month on the Hebrew calendar, and that's when the civil new year begins. You maybe heard Rosh Hashanah, the new year, and the Jews celebrate on the beginning day of the seventh month of the year, but the months are counted from Nisan. You know, some people say, well, how can there be two different new years? It's like this. Our school system begins each September. 
That's the beginning of a new school year. January is the beginning of our calendar year on the Gregorian calendar. So they're two different new years, right? In Israel, they celebrate the civil new year on the first day of the seventh month. But the biblical year is counted starting from the first month, Nisan. And in Exodus 12, God speaks to Moses and he says, the next month is the beginning of months. Everything will be counted from this point forward. Originally, the month Nisan was called Abib, and the word Abib means spring. It's the first month of the spring harvest. And it's also the month that God called the Jewish people out of Egypt, and therefore it's called the month of redemption, and brought them through the desert and into the promised land. As the second year began, God directed Moses to raise up the tabernacle on the first day of the first month of the second year that they were in the wilderness of Sinai. God gave them complete directions how to build that tabernacle, every detail, and everything in that tabernacle is a picture of Yeshua. It points to him. For example, he is the Ark of the Covenant. He is God come to earth to dwell with men. He is Emmanuel, God with us. And he's also our high priest. And just as in the Old Testament, the high priest would come into the Holy of Holies, so Yeshua is our high priest who went into the very presence of God, carrying his own blood. So not only was he our sacrificial lamb, the Pascal, the Paschal lamb, the Passover lamb, he's also our Gadol, our high priest, who took his own blood into the very presence of God and put it upon the propitiation and made atonement for our sins. Hallelujah, he's so wonderful. Everything about the tabernacle of Moses points to Yeshua. Everything you see in the tabernacle of Moses reveals Yeshua. Now the Lord Yahweh told Moses, be very careful that you build this tabernacle exactly the way I tell you. Why? Why was it so important? Because everything in the tabernacle has meaning and significance. And that's why it needs to be built exactly the way Yahweh said to do it. Praise the Lord. In John 1.1, Yeshua came. John 1.1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. Amen. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Yeshua is the physical expression of the Godhead. He is Yahweh who has come in the flesh. Our God is one. And Yeshua came. He is Jehovah. Glory to God. And we beheld his glory, the only begotten Son of God. Now, I used to wonder about that word begotten. God sent his only begotten Son into the world. I wondered, what does that mean? You see, many years ago, I was a young Christian, brand new baby Christian, and I began to study who God is and who Jesus is. And I discovered that the word begotten means essentially to bring forth one of the exact same kind or species. For example, in Canada, we've got a five cent coin called a nickel, and it has an image of a Canadian beaver stamped on it. Now, let me ask you, when a beaver has a baby, what kind of baby is it? What's the species of the baby? What is it that the beaver begats? It's a beaver. So beavers beget beavers, deers beget deers, lions beget lions, and God begets God. Hallelujah. Yeshua is God. The Son of God. He's the only begotten Son of God. And in his name and only in his name is there salvation. So Yeshua is Yahweh. Jesus is Jehovah. It says, we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten Son of God, full of grace and truth. The book of Hebrews tells us that in times past, God spoke to us through the Torah and the prophets of the Old Testament. But now 
He has spoken to us through his son, Yeshua. Oh, I love to read the book of Hebrews. It's such a valuable book of revelation concerning who Yeshua is. And if you have a chance, please watch my one-hour worship video that I sang on the Day of Atonement called An Hour in the Holy of Holies. I recorded it singing it, dressed all in white on the Day of Atonement. And there I sing many songs about Christ, his shed blood, and I explain and read scriptures from Hebrews 9 and chapter 10, which explain who Yeshua really is and his ministry as being our great high priest. I love Yeshua. He's everything. And this one hour worship video that I did on the Day of Atonement, I called it an hour in the Holy of Holies. And when you worship with me, please listen to it and worship along with me. You'll be so touched as you realize who Yeshua is, our great high priest. Hallelujah. Now, I also read five Psalms a day. Every month there's usually 30 days. There's also 31 Proverbs. There's 150 Psalms. So if you read five Psalms a day, you'll read the entire book of Psalms once through each month. Now, they are amazing songs when you get to the end of the month. Psalm 141 to Psalm 150. And I sing them. For example, Blessed be the Lord my strength, which teaches my hands to war, my fingers to fight, my eyes to see. Blessed be the Lord, my goodness, my fortress, my high tower, my deliverer, my shield, and he in whom I trusteth. Blessed be the Lord. I love these psalms, especially from 141 to 150, but I love all the psalms. But here, as you get to the end of each month, make sure you read, sing, and internalize them. David writes those songs, and he begins many of them with this expression, Praise ye the Lord. Well, that's King James Version. Praise ye means you praise. And the Lord is actually the shortened form in Hebrew of Yahweh or Yahweh. The shortened form is Yah. And the word halal means to praise. So when you say hallelujah, you praise the Lord. Amen. I hope that helps you. In the end of this month of Adar, I've read through the book of Psalms and I've placed some songs for you to enjoy on my timeline from Psalms 141 to 150. Hallelujah. Let's pray together. Dear Lord, as we begin this month of Nisan, the month of redemption, we ask you, Father, and we praise you that you spoke to Moses and said, this shall be the first day of the first month. And Father, you've given this month to be the month of redemption. And I pray, Lord, for all my friends that you would touch them as they begin this new year. Touch them to follow you, to obey your Torah, to understand that, as Yeshua said when he rose from the dead, all things that were written about me had to be fulfilled, which are written in the Torah of Moses, in the Psalms, and in the prophets. I pray, dear Lord, that you would touch everyone to read your Torah, to read your Psalms, to read the prophets, because they all speak of you, Yeshua. Thank you, Lord, for the new covenant. Yeshua, please write the Torah inside our hearts so that we will desire to obey you and we'll have the power to obey the commandments of God. I also pray, Lord, that you would stir your people to put aside the seventh day, the Shabbat, the day of rest that you commanded in commandment number four. It's a very important commandment and you've, you took a lot of space to describe how important it is. And you told us to set it apart for you, not to dilly dally and waste time and do our own things, less important things, useless things, but rather we would do the important things. We would put our heart and our soul dedicated to you every Shabbat day, Lord, and that we would be fired up by your word, by your Torah, by the Ruach HaKodesh, the holy breath of God that has come inside of us. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for answering our prayers together with my friends on the internet by providing this home for us to live in, a home where we can have a television 
facility, a recording studio, and even, Lord, this beautiful backyard. Oh, thank you. Right on the edge of the Sherwood Forest here in Orlando with a beautiful lake close by. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would let many songs and prophecies, teachings, and blessings go forth from this house for the glory of Yahweh and Yeshua, for the mighty purposes of redemption, as this month declares, for really Yeshua declares it by his very life. We dedicate it all to you now, Lord. Happy new biblical year, I pray, to all my friends around the world in the mighty name of Yeshua, the only begotten Son of God, the Savior of the human race. Amen and amen. Well, brothers and sisters, God bless you. Thanks for taking a few minutes to watch with me here in my backyard, Yahweh's backyard here in Orlando, Florida. Happy biblical new year, everyone. I'm Steve Kuban. Shalom, shalom.